Good morning, good afternoon. I'm not sure where you guys are from, but <laughs> today I'm here with the lovely John Adam. John Hammond, how you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing well. Hey, this is a ton of fun. Thank you so much for letting me come hang out with everyone for a little bit. <laughs> man, this is going to be awesome. So, um, John, I, I, the way I do my interviews, I like to, it's like very like, uh, like it's not a job interview, but I like to do like, uh, what's it? Tell me about yourself. So tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do. Okay, sure thing. So, uh, hello. Yeah, my name is John. Um, for my day job, right, the stuff that pays the bills, uh, I work at a company called Huntress. They do uh, managed threat detection and cybersecurity um, for a lot of what we say, oh, the 99%, um, small to mid-market businesses or managed service providers. And that's a lot of fun. Um, but over on the side, I have a cheesy YouTube channel where I showcase a lot of uh, a cybersecurity videos, guides and walkthroughs and tutorials on all nerdy tech stuff. Uh, breaking into some war games like Try Hack Me and Hack the Box or showcasing CTFs, Capture the Flag, um, anything I can get my hands on. <laughs> awesome. And um, with me, like I like to ask these, these questions. Um, uh, what got, what, like, what's your background? Like, Did you always work security or... or did you, did you go from something else? Just curious. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So I I guess I grew up sort of like any kid and they say, hey, I want to make video games or I want to be a hacker or something like that. Um, <laughs> and I, I guess I had Googled probably at a young age. I was just looking online, trying to find resources and how to be hacker or how to make video game. Right. Um, and it was probably around like high school or middle school. And I was like, all right, well, uh, I found it. Eric S. Raymond's blog post that said, if you want to do this stuff, you need to learn how to program and how to code. And uh, so that got my feet wet with Python, a really cool uh, scripting language. Um, and then I started to learn a little bit of like, oh, HTML, how to make websites and all that. And for the longest time, it was creating software and like building things, small, tiny trinkets and stuff. But it wasn't until I got um, into my undergrad for, for college and university that it shifted to more of the cybersecurity uh, flair. Mm -hmm. I, I attended the United States Coast Guard Academy, which is one of the military institutions and service academies, like a West Point or an Annapolis and something like that uh, for the Coast Guard. And they tend to care more about the security of stuff that you make. Like, hey, it's cool and nice that you can build this thing, but can anyone else break that thing um so that introduced me to capture the flag and that introduced me to vulnerabilities and exploits and cves and the wonderful world of security <laughs> awesome awesome um for i guess for someone because i i know security is like huge it's big um what what is uh i guess for someone brand new like what is your thought process or what do you recommend for someone brand new to security and since i have you here i might as well ask you that question oh totally so. yeah thanks so much for asking uh it, you're totally right it is a ginormous wide field um there are way too many cool things to dive into so it's really whatever you might be the most interested in um i think and i would probably go out and venture to say it is kind of fun to go learn how to do that Hollywood style hacking, right? Like, oh, uh, play pretend hacker, sort of acting as the adversary. I want to fire off some SQL injection or remote code execution or, or start to st sort of play a little bit of the bad guy, just so you understand how those threats and vulnerabilities and exploits work. Um, and honestly, it augments and feeds a lot of the stuff that you might do just after that. Like if you're more interested in like, hey, I want to defend companies. I want to protect, I want to do blue team and security stuff. Uh, well, if you know how the adversaries work, uh, you know what makes them tick, you know what they're thinking about when they see something here and there on a file system or a network, then you're stronger than the other guy. So I would often, I, I tend to tell people, hey, go play some Capture the Flag or some of the cybersecurity sports that uh, really help, you know, cut your teeth and uh, get you sharp on the stuff. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Um, okay. So what, what are some, uh, I, it, it, in the top of your head, I'm just asking like, what's some resources you recommend? Like for, I guess free, let's go with the free resources first and then totally. Yeah, uh, I'm a huge proponent of a lot of like online war games uh, and cyber ranges. There are some good ones that I would totally recommend for beginners if they aren't if they are new to Linux, like the operating system and distribution that's free and open source. Um, 
overthewire.org is a really cool one for that. Um, it showcases some of the command line fundamentals. Um, if you wanted to get the Windows side of that, there's underthewire.tech. That's going to do a lot of PowerShell stuff and just knowing your way around. Um, and then, again, echoing some of the capture the flag flare, there's this uh, event called PICO CTF or P-I-C-O CTF.org. Um, and it's a very, very cool, very beginner friendly, like really approachable competition. And they say, oh, it's for middle schooler and high schoolers, but totally don't take that for the words that it is like uh, I struggle with a whole lot of the later challenges because it starts small. You get some bite sized learning and then it gets pretty tough. It ramps up quick. So uh, by no means is it just hey for middle schooler and high schoolers. It's just meant to be approachable and friendly. <laughs> Got it. And and what are your, what are your thoughts on like uh, try hack me or hack the box or um, I guess range force and stuff like that. Yeah. No, I'm a huge fan of, of try hack me and hack the box. Uh, and there are so many out there. I know you mentioned range force. I know there's like blue team labs. I know there's let's defend. I know oh, there are tons. Uh, we could probably make a whole show just enumerating every single <laughs> online resource. Um, Try Hack Me is a very, very good at hey helping guide and walk through the beginners and those folks that would like uh, something to hold, help hold their hand as they learn something new. Um, Try Hack Me isn't always free. There are some rooms or some activities that do kind of re require a subscription, but for the most part, like seventy to eighty percent is free and totally accessible. Um, I've always said try hack me is a great place for learning and kind of having the training wheels on mm -hmm. um, hack the box is sort of like the gym. Hey, you're going to lift some of those heavy weights. You're trying to grow and test your skills um, because, Hey, you got some really cool stuff. That's right in the deep end. Uh, try hack me is great for learning and hack the box is great for training. <laughs> got it. Got it. So for someone, I guess like me that has a little bit of a little, like I have job experience, obviously. So, would you think I should mix both of them or should I just go with one and then move on to the other one afterwards? Oh, you're going to hate me. I, I have a bad answer. Uh, <laughs> go for the one that you like. Uh, go for the one that's more enjoyable. Go for the one that you're passionate about and you have a whole lot of fun playing with. Um, I think for most folks, dip in your toes and try Hack Me to start um, and then seeing Hack the Box and seeing how, how do they play together. Um, if you want to do both, more power to you. Bounce back and forth. Do the stuff that you uh, like and are interested in. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, cool. Um, actually, I had Keep It Techie here. He just sent a super chat. Hey, $20. Hey, oh, so my much. goodness. Thank you. He said, hey, John Hammond. Great to see you working with KevTech. Salute. So good to see you, Keep It Techie. Um, I was going to ask you another question, actually. So what's the um, – for 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 because I, I talk about – so my channel is all about soft skills and help desk, right? So what, what are your thoughts on like how, 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 uh, I guess for me, some people say soft skills is underrated. I don't believe in that. Like how important is soft skills in it, especially in cybersecurity. So I oh. like to hear about that. Honestly, I think some of those soft skills are a little bit of the bread and butter. Uh, like oftentimes you'll be trying to explain some concept or something, whether it's a vulnerability that you found or the impact of some potential CVE in the news and on the headlines, whether you're explaining that to your peers or your colleagues or upper management or clients and customers and partners, right? When you're in that situation, being able to communicate, uh, being able to break down a whole lot of usually complex topics, right? And I, that parallels super duper well, I think, with a lot of help desk roles. It's like, hey, how can I, you know, ELI five, how can I explain like I'm five or explain like, hey, we're, we're kind of getting across some other ideas and concepts that aren't usually discussed um, and being able to communicate that with a lot of humility, with a lot of modesty, uh, with a lot of Hey, just for your awareness, totally want to be gentle with whatever we're chatting about. Um, totally want to be here on the ground floor with you, the person that I'm conversing with. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that is invaluable. Um, and I think, I hope, I, I'd love to kind of pick your brain. What do you think, Kevin? Does that, does that parallel well to help desk? <laughs> yeah, it, it does. Because uh, I, work, I worked a lot with uh, executives and C-level folks. And at the oh, end yeah. of the day, I don't look at a title. I treat everyone the same. Like I treat everyone with respect and I try to um, be like the, the guy that 
uh, I just treat you like, even if it's a janitor, I treat you the same. I treat everyone with respect and love, and I don't try to fight anyone. I try to uh, break things down in a non-tech way, like they're my mom and dad. So that's, that's and I'm a it. firm believer of that. <laughs> I'm a firm believer of that. So it's just. I'm right there with you, man. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> and um, especially when work, when I'm working with my mom and dad, you know, my dad, he's not good with computers and he's not good with his, with his phone. And uh, I ask him, uh, like I show him something. He's like, I don't understand this, and I have to like explain it to him. Like, okay, I understand now. So, <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you another question. Actually, For sure. uh, this is a little more random. Um, but LinkedIn, how how what do you think of LinkedIn and what about LinkedIn connections and how how important is LinkedIn for someone brand new to IT? Just Ooh. picking your brain. Oh, that's a that's a good one. There's a whole lot to unpack there because I think there are a lot of different. Uh, perceptions, right? So uh, needless to say, I am a content creator. Like, hey, I put videos out on YouTube. I try to be active in the community and in social media, et cetera. And LinkedIn is no exception. Um, I probably to a fault uh, accept like literally every single connection request. Uh, <laughs> and that's that's just me, right? Because I like, hey, I want to get more eyes and uh, more attention on the cool stuff that I try to bring to the community, bring out to the table. Uh, and I, for, for jobs, right, for job hunting or for looking around, I am a huge advocate personally. Just it's really cool to build your network. It, it, it's really cool to meet new people uh, if just to have hey, your name's part of their radar. Uh, and maybe there are some opportunities down the line where you say, hey, company XYZ is hiring, or I've got a spot open at company ABC. Uh, I'm a huge fan of, hey, just trying to make yourself connected to as many people as possible within reason, right? Obviously, if you have your own, hey, I don't know this person, I really don't want to, that's totally your call. Like, uh, but I, I think LinkedIn uh, and Twitter and Facebook and wherever you can. Uh, I like that community personally. <laughs> Got it. And um, I'm going to ask you a, a, another question. Should should um, should someone like brand new to IT, like should they like like send their email to like a hiring manager on LinkedIn? Like, is that OK? Or because sometimes you have the ATS system and sometimes people want to bypass the ATS system. So is it OK to just go and send an email to a hiring manager, like in a professional message? with your resume you've seen people have done that before or you don't see haven't seen that yeah no, totally so in my opinion i think that's totally okay uh i think it's great to shoot your shot might be i don't know the best way to put it but like hey I, i've done that before honestly the 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 ceo of the company that i work at his name is kyle mm -hmm. uh years ago before i joined huntress where i am now i basically cold called him like on Twitter. I just sent him a direct message and I was like, Hey, I know you're a super busy fella. Uh, I love seeing all the cool stuff that you're up to, but I, I make these small cheesy videos to showcase cybersecurity education. Would you mind just, I don't know, taking a look and sharing it if you think it's cool. Um, and he was super responsive about it, which I was phenomenal, uh, really receptive and said, John, this is, this is great stuff, man. Uh, and he was willing to share it and help showcase it. And it was just the beginning of a beautiful friendship, right? Uh, <laughs> that story may vary, right? That maybe that's not always going to be the case. But I think within tech and within security, it is one of the friendliest communities if, if you if you do it right. If you have that humility and modesty, uh, the respect that you're talking about, like, hey, treat everyone as your mother and father and your brothers and sisters, right? I think knocking on the door and saying, Hey, this is what I'm about. Uh, do you have any interest in chatting more with me? That's totally appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to ask you about that. And I, you mentioned your job now. So what do you, what do you do in your current job? <laughs> yeah. So I am super duper fortunate. Um, it, the title is so cheesy and formal, like, Oh, a senior security researcher. Um, but being uh, research, it's under the R&D or the research and development department of our threat operations at, at Huntress. Um, it's it's honestly just lovely because research is a very fun thing where you get to say, I just get to poke at stuff. I just, <laughs> I just get to learn. I just get to tinker. I get to play and try new things. Um, oftentimes, uh, in our case, it's either, hey, cutting through malware, trying to dissect and understand the latest threats, uh, ransomware and crypto miners and all the shenanigans, uh, or trying to build out new functionality and new features for our product. Uh, 
Um, we are a software as a service agent that will kind of survey the endpoint and get an understanding of what does this computer look like? Are there any pieces of malware or bad nefarious activity uh, tucked away in the corners and crevices like, oh, auto runs or scheduled tasks or services that might not be good or innocent. Um, and there's a whole lot more to the, the rest of the platform, uh, but it's a very, very cool to take that playground of like, hey, we're going to defend and protect so many different computers and workstations and businesses at the end of the day. Uh, how do we keep boarding up the windows and making this thing more secure? So it's a ton of fun. <laughs> awesome. And, and I, I'm guessing is that like, I guess, because the thing is with security and people get confused that there are different teams. There's like the red team, then there's the blue team, then there's the purple team. Like, are you like in between like the red team or is that what it is? I think it's totally a uh, blue team a, a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fun because I mentioned, hey, a lot of the stuff that I try and showcase and preach is a little bit more traditional red team, like being the hacker or being the adversary, but blue team is defending and trying to play that cat and mouse game. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the cool things is that we do a lot of threat hunting, right? So when we know that there is malicious activity, we start the investigation and we start to go look around and see, okay, where are the other hooks and claws and implants that we can eradicate out? Um, and it's fun because it's like a proactive thing. It's like, hey, we're we're not sitting with our feet up on the dashboard waiting for the alarm bells and whistles to go off. We're going hunting. Uh, and again, really cool, really fun stuff. I totally would recommend it if anyone has any interest in that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was going to ask you another question. This is, this is a, uh, don't hate me for asking you this question, no but um, what, what's your, what's your thought? Cause I get opinions from everyone. I get different opinions from everyone. What's your thought on security plus? Security Plus? Ooh. Yeah, the cert in general. Yeah, so certification uh, Security Plus is from CompTIA, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Security Plus was my very first cert certification. Um, when I first got out of undergrad, I went to go work with a Department of Defense Cyber Training Academy. Um, and in that federal government space, you know, they have to meet the um, requirements and standards. I think it's like DOD 8140. It used to be 8570. Um, but I needed to be IAT level two. And it's like, okay, cool. I'll press the I believe button, <laughs> whatever that means. Right. Uh, so I had honestly a six month grace period. And that was very lovely, by the way, for anyone uh, looking for a job. Uh, if, if their employer is comfortable, Hey, let's bring you on board. Let's give you a chance. As long as you get your security plus within a lot of amount of time, that's a nice thing. Uh, so Security Plus was my first certification. Um, I already had a background in a lot of, hey, that on the keyboard operational cybersecurity stuff. And Security Plus, I think, I don't know if it's changed in the years. It would have been around 2018, four years or so when I took this. Um, and from what I remember, it was multiple choice, a uh, little bit of drag and drop here and there. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's a time and a place for like, hey, I want to learn the lingo. I want to understand the terminology that comes in the cybersecurity space. And I think that was a very, very cool thing that Security Plus did. It's like, all right, here's a little bit of knowledge in all these different fields. And then you can talk the talk, right? You know, you can have a conversation and know what's going on for other cybersecurity folks, nerds like me. Um, I really like some of the application-based practical learning, right? Uh, and there's a ton of those, OSCP, EJPT, CRTO, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but Security Plus is a great way, hey, let's dip our toes in the water. Let's kind of get a feel for what is this whole wide new world of cybersecurity? Uh, and I'm a good fan. Uh, I know it was my first certificate and I totally uh, recommend it to others. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just wondering. I'm studying it right now. And also, nice. I, I know that their uh, government jobs usually ask for it. So if you work for the government, you got to have like Security Plus. They, they kind of like make you have it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that's what I was asking. Uh, I was going to ask you uh, actually uh, an another question. Like for someone that, because I know we're talking about a cybersecurity, cyber, cyber, cyber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry. What, what's there? No, no, no. You're good. You're good. I want to know uh, for someone that's non tech, what has captured the flag? Yeah, and I'm that, sorry. I'm sorry I didn't uh, kind of offer that earlier. Um, 
So if you aren't familiar, um, Capture the Flag or that acronym CTF is a game. It's, it's, a, it's an activity, it's a playground where you, as the participant, as the player, are kind of handed a bunch of tasks or activities to go do and perform, right? Um, and all these things are centered around different aspects of InfoSec. Uh, whether you're looking at forensics, host-based forensics, network-based forensics, memory-based forensics, right? Or web application security, like, hey, how does this website look? Um, cryptography, if you want to get into how does the TLS handshake and SSL actually happen? Uh, or binary exploitation or steganography or, you know, any of those things in the different categories. It's sort of like an Olympic style event with all these different things you could do. And once you accomplish the task, you get a flag. And that's the key or like the string and, and the token that you can give to a scoreboard that says, hey, I did it. I accomplished the task. And it's really fun because you're doing that and so many other players are doing that. And there's this leaderboard of like, ooh, okay, you can see how you benchmark against your peers or your friends. And it's a little bit of encouragement and motivation where you say, ooh, I am in like the 14th place. If I solve just another one, I could break into top 10. And it's like, I'm gonna solve one more. I wanna go, go do something else. Uh, and it exposes you to a lot of different technologies and software and tools and tricks and techniques that you might not have seen before. So uh, Capture the Flag is one great way to learn in my opinion. <laughs> no, that's, that's cool. But you wanted, I, I wanted to like to, I guess I want to know more about it because I, yeah. I don't work security. I'm going to ask you that question. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask you another, actually I was curious to ask you another question. Um, for somebody, I guess for someone in IT, like help desk, for example, what, what would you, what would be your advice like for career pivot to transition over to security? Like what, what advice would you give someone that, that works help desk? A lot of, I have a lot of viewers here that they're mostly help desk IT support. So I guess what would be your, your advice? Like how, how do you get out of that? How do you get out of the help desk role and go into security? Because a lot of people get stuck at help desk and they want to go into security. That's why I wanted to ask you. Yeah. What's your advice on that? I honestly think you and the help desk position gives you the most advantage and groundwork to really get into security because, hey, you're already knowing the ins and outs of what, the computer system might be you you have the budding like system administrator or network administrator sort of in your veins already uh and that's a very cool thing because you know how to troubleshoot you know how to debug you know how to solve a problem whether it's just if it's googling and learning how to do it you can do it uh so for advice if it's all right i think it it, it kind of boils down to some of the cheesy basics but like have your portfolio, uh, have your projects that you like to tinker with and do maybe even outside of your day job, right? But show your work and the stuff that you're learning about, the certifications that you're going after, have a website, use GitHub. Like when you're online and you're chatting through in Discord or you're a member of the community or you're attending events and conferences, I think it's very, very cool to, again, network with all the people as we mentioned in LinkedIn and social media and you just show that, hey, I, I want to break into this community. And if you're vocal about that and you say like, hey, this is a lot of fun. Like I'm really enjoying help desk stuff, but I'm ready to go tackle something new. Um, that's, I, I think, going to be really respected and really admired. So just dive in. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone asked, like, asked a question, though, uh, about certifications. Actually, how do you stay motivated for studying? Ooh. Oh, that's a, such a good question. Um, it, it, it comes in waves, you know? Um, and I think a lot of people might agree like, all right, if I'm hard charging and running towards certifications or studying and spending long nights, working weekends, basically, it it, it sometimes wears you down and, and it, it can turn into a pretty unmaintainable lifestyle once you're losing sleep. And I'm a horrific example of this. <laughs> um, I, I would really recommend when you're feeling that burnout coming on, take a break, uh, go play some cheesy video games or go hang out with your friends, family, loved ones, go play with the dog, 
go outside and take a small walk. Um, what I've learned very, very recently, well, I've been given this advice and this knowledge and, and wisdom, like put your phone on airplane mode. <laughs> <laughs> like don't let anyone else distract you and just chill and relax and take a breather. Um, and I think that's very, very warranted. Once you do that, Either you get a little bit of anxiety and you're like, oh, shoot, I should get back to work and studying. Or you'll be like, all right, I feel pretty rested. I'm ready to dive back in. Both of which will maybe get you back in action. So whether it's studying, I know it's a long grind, but uh, it's very, very worth it once you get closer and closer to the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> someone someone asked another question, actually, about uh, is how important is networking in cybersecurity, like networking as uh, you know, networking like TCP IP, not networking as LinkedIn. <laughs> How important <laughs> is networking? Yeah. So I'll be totally straight up and transparent. Uh, I, I don't have any of the Cisco, a CCNA or CCMP or, or certs in that world. Uh, I don't have my network plus, I don't have my a plus. And if you want those or you like them or you have them more power to you. Um, uh, I think it comes naturally like as you start to play and as you start poking through whether it's war games or whatever training that you're doing it's sort of organic when you think oh that's an ip address oh i know it's connected to this router and there's the broadcaster gateway address and like oh i know that router is natted right because it's a local maybe thing and okay sweet that's totally a wan router to do the actual internet over there but i'm in this sort of castle walls here and maybe there's a little bit of segmentation between VLANs or whatever, but look, I know how one packet moves from the next to the next TCP, UDP, blah, blah, blah. Uh, personally, I think it comes naturally and you don't need to spend a ton of time diving into it unless you really want to, or you're super interested in how does the router work? What's BGP doing? What is the firewall actually up to? Uh, if that's something you're passionate about and interested in, all yours but you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think, I think it also falls back on, on what kind of job you're, you're applying for in cybersecurity too. And what, what it, like some, like some job roles in security, you don't need to know active directory, for example, like what I, what I teach, yep. uh, it depends on the role that you're working in, in security. Someone was asking a question about it. Uh, I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you a question actually. Um, I guess, Someone, someone said CCNA and all that other stuff. But besides that, I wanted to ask you a question about: Do you do anything on the? I know you you do you do like uh, blue team stuff, but do you do anything like AWS or or anything with cloud? Yeah. Um, no. So honestly, it's interesting when you bring it to the conversation of of, of scale, right? Like, okay, cool. If if I'm rocking over at Huntress for my day job, how do we bring the security? Um, in these solutions to as many people as possible. So that probably leans more towards the engineering and development side, but mm -hmm. you hear DevOps all the time. Like, okay, how can we get Azure or AWS or GCP to be spun up with the infrastructure that we might need? Um, and that might be digging into Terraform, that might be playing with cool, crazy stuff like Chef or Puppet or things to provision it. Uh, but totally, cloud is is undoubtedly part of the conversation now and, and absolutely here to stay. Um, I'll be the first to admit that's not my super strong forte. I can probably spin up an AWS Lambda function and get some S3 buckets cruising, but that might be it for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, are, are you, are you just out of curiosity, are you, are you going to pursue any, any search for cloud, like maybe AWS or, or, Azure yes. or GCP or? Yeah, so without a doubt, I would like to. Um, as I'm sure, hey, everyone probably knows, time is a luxury uh, and comes at a premium. So uh, I hope that I can soon, but there's so many other cool stuff to, to chase and take a look at. So maybe hopefully next year or the year after, but it's totally on the horizon. I absolutely would love to tackle some, some cloud learning. <laughs> And and uh, I was gonna ask you about um, I guess for for someone in in uh, in help desk or IT support like do you do you think they should because I I know that Splunk has free training should they go over should they like study that or go over that if they're trying to to learn those skills I guess like like Splunk or uh, I don't know CrowdStrike maybe what's Ooh, your opinion yeah. on that 
So uh, again, uh, probably my, my boring, bad lawyer answer, but like, if you'd like to, and if you want to, um, I'll be the first to admit, Hey, we don't use Splunk over at my shop. Um, it, it's one very, very cool thing. So we can get some other centralized logs and info and Intel. Um, but it totally depends on where you go and what you're doing at your own kind of employer and company. Um, CrowdStrike, obviously one super duper cool EDR and cybersecurity vendor. If you can learn the ropes uh, and you want to, and you have the bandwidth for it, that makes you stronger. Like every little bit that you can learn and whatever you can get your hands on, it's exposing you to more cool stuff that you know you can use and it's in your tool belt for, for later, if need be. Um, but it also, you get to weigh the options and weigh the pros and cons. Like, well, do I use this on a day-to-day -day basis? Am I going too soon or later? Um, and if that's something that you're thinking about, go for it. Uh, but you totally get to weigh those costs on you. On you. <laughs> Got it. And uh, someone someone was asking, like, are, are, uh, are there, like, remote jobs in cybersecurity? I'm like, just random question. Yes. So without a <laughs> doubt. Uh, I work remote, which is lovely. Uh, t would absolutely recommend it to everyone. <laughs> um, and yeah, a lot, I think, obviously, given the world situation, right, coming out of what we just came out of, uh, there's a little bit new focus in, hey, we can do stuff remotely. Like, uh, in, in, in cybersecurity and tech and all of this especially, like, hey, there's a lot of runway to be able to be anywhere. Uh you might be kicking it with a VPN to connect into work. You might not, uh, but Slack, Discord, Teams, anything, uh, there is a way to certainly go about it. Um, and it's a very, very cool culture, I will admit, at least maybe I'm just fortunate, but hey, when you get together in meetings, we're, we're cameras on because we're nice and friendly. Uh, we like to be able to see each other, have that person-to-person -person communication, even if it's through a screen. Um, but when we get to some events or some conferences or some, Hey, company get together. It's like a family reunion. Uh, and that's a very, very awesome thing. Um, so without a doubt, there are tons of, of remote jobs. And if you know, you want that ask, uh, even if you find some companies that are normally in the office, you can kind of say like, Hey, this is a long commute for me, or it's basically impossible because I'm on the other end of the country or whatever. Ask. Uh, remote is absolutely a potential. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say that in uh, for remote jobs, like I've seen people get remote jobs and help us. So, oh yeah, it's definitely possible. So it's not, it's not impossible. I see people get jobs. It, it, they, some some companies, uh, they have a hybrid way of doing things. Like they want like hybrid, like maybe three days, three days on site, and then I guess two days remote. So I guess it varies from company to company. But some companies are hundred percent remote, depending on the company, obviously. But because someone was asking me that question, I was gonna, I'm answering this question, and someone was asking about. Uh, let me see here. Someone says I, I'm learning, I'm learning SIM, S I E M, and E D R tools, nice. and I'm having a difficult time learn, uh, getting a job in cybersecurity. Do you have any advice for me? Someone was asking on LinkedIn. Ooh. Um. So learning SIM and E D R and having trouble finding a job is that is that what I heard? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, hmm. So Seam uh, is sort of the centralized event management uh, server and location, right? EDR being endpoint detection response. Just to give that context, if, co if, if folks aren't familiar with those acronyms, uh, I, I would go back to, hey, uh, if you can reach out to folks uh, building out that network. Um, that is invaluable. I realize that's a boring, broken record answer. Um, I'm trying to think if I can get you anything more. There are some competitions, and I think it might even be Splunk, right? Or like Boss of the Sock um, mm -hmm. Security Operations Center, where you can get integrated and get on the radar of other companies, of other folks looking for a new round of folks. Hey, can we bring in any new employees uh, and get some new candidates? That's a very, very cool thing. Uh, so boss of the sock. I know it sounds weird when you say it fast. Uh, <laughs> if anyone wanted to Google that, but. Mm -hmm. hmm. I'm trying to think of a better answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Being a member of the community, and I know, hey, Kevin, you got an awesome uh, shop here, right, with everyone kind of coming together. Um, mm -hmm. 
there are always roles looking around. So maybe it's just a matter of, hey, asking friends, asking peers, um, and throwing it out there. And I was going to say for, 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 for uh, Felix, yeah, Felix on LinkedIn, he was asking that question. Uh, you could go into uh, Cyber Dojo, Mint, like Cyber Mentor Dojo. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure you're familiar with that platform, but I recommend go talk to them and they will look at your resume and they would figure out what's going on with, with what you're doing. Because sometimes it's, it's, nothing to do, something, it's nothing to do with you. Sometimes it's the resume and you can't get a job because of the resume. Because at, at the end of the day, you won't be noticed if you have issues with the resume. The, the resume plays a part when it comes to applying for jobs. It, it gets kicked back by the ATS system. So just, just answering you that question. Uh, and someone said, what made John join the blue team over the red? Huh, interesting. Ooh. Yeah, no, thank you for asking. I think that's a cool question. I like that question. Um, I, I got to admit, uh, I didn't know or expect to uh, hey fall into more of that like incident response, threat hunting and, and defense realm. Because I always like learned and leaned into that capture the flag, hey, being the hacker, being a penetration tester, bug bounty scene. Um, but stumbling into it, uh, I've found that it's really, really fulfilling uh and i know it sounds kind of cheesy and it probably sounds pretty dumb uh but it's a weird sentimental thing where you're like hey i i feel like i'm helping companies protect themselves i feel like i'm making a little bit of a difference in the world if we're making bad people and threat actors work harder to hold businesses and data for ransom uh when you see uh, some of the crazy wild stuff from the news like oh goodness a university or school had to shut down because of a ransomware attack or oh so many personnel records from medical dental whatever the case may be records just now for sale out on the dark web that's crazy stuff mm -hmm. uh and it I like to think, hey, okay, we can make a difference in cybersecurity, which sounds again pretty cheesy but <laughs> It, it's it's real adversaries. Uh, I think a lot of how we learn and try to practice and prepare for a, when something hits the fan, we're playing CTFs, uh, we're doing tabletop exercises, we're role playing and playing pretend. But when you see money go down the drain or crippled businesses and organizations because of like viruses and malware, it's not a game anymore. It, it, it's very real. So I, I, I hope I can be on the front lines a little bit of that. <laughs> that was good. I, I, like, I like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone else is asking opinions on working in federal or private sector. Ooh, thank you. Um, so, so this is totally a matter of opinion. Uh, and forgive me, it's going to be super subjective, right? Um, but a little bit of the, my backstory started with the Coast Guard, um, pivoted over to the Department of Defense um, for Cyber Training Academy and then Threat Reduction Agency. So for the first half, maybe a couple good years of my career, right, quote unquote, it was govy. It was federal. Um, and there is nothing wrong with that. A lot of people love that route. A lot of people think there's a lot of incredible benefits with that because there are. Um, I got a little bit uh, maybe tired of the, the pace, you know, the frequency, the cadence, things were just a little bit slow. Uh, and that's nature of, hey, you know, the, the behemoth that it might be. Uh, so when I kind of had the ask to go join the fun bus <laughs> and, and the party over at Huntress, it, it's private sector, right? It's It's mid-market and small businesses and managed service providers but we're moving and shaking you know we're, we're moving fast we'll break stuff we'll make mistakes and that's all right because we learn from them um i have had a little bit more fun and enjoyment um on the private side than the federal side just personally that's totally just a john answer and it might be different for you um but i would totally recommend try both uh and just see where you're what you're feeling Makes sense. Um, and and John, I just wanted to wanted to ask you uh, wanted to ask you a, a, a random question, I guess. Yeah. What made you start a Discord? Ooh, oh, it's so funny. So, I was growing the the small the YouTube channel that I have, and it was maybe around hey four thousand subscribers way back when, maybe mm -hmm. eight. I don't know. Um, but it was it was budding, starting to grow. It was cultivating something. 
and I did a stream. I did a live stream just to hang out, just to chat with everyone. Hey, super casual and candid. And I said, like, would we want some sort of a community? Or would it be very, very cool to have a little bit more like real time interaction with all these great people? And they said, like, yeah, like you could see it in the chat, in the live stream chat. Like, yes, without a doubt. People were, and I was asking, like, should that be on Slack? Should that be on Discord or whatever? Uh, and this was years ago. So I think Discord was probably like the the up and comer, right? And everyone was saying Discord. Like, let's let's get it on Discord. Uh, and that's how it came to be. Um, so I have the, the cheesy Discord channel. And I have to admit, I'm so, so grateful to the mods and admins and volunteers because they they are carrying that thing. It is like theirs. I, I feel so hands off and I'm grateful for that. Uh, but no, we've grown to like 16,000 members. So it's uh, just something that, that still starts growing as you grow. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to ask. I wanted. To, I'm curious. I wanted to ask that question because I, I I'm on your Discord too, and I'm just wondering about that. <laughs> yeah, thanks um, for jumping but, in. <laughs> yeah, I know definitely. Uh, someone was asking actually, what are you planning on doing in three five years from now, John? Research and blue team or? So, here's the fun down low, right? Um, Huntress, uh, my day job is very very open about the fact like. Look, someday we're going to cross the finish line. Someday we're going to take the exit ramp um, and whatever IPO might be in the future. I don't know. Um, and that's super exciting. Uh, and I don't know if that's going to be three to five years from now or when that case may be. I think that is what's on the horizon. Um, don't tell anyone I said that. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, uh, and I would really like, in all reality, to pour more into this whole thing. Like spending time with you, spending time with others, doing YouTube and content creation and sharing education. Like it'd be cool. Hey, maybe get some courses for, you know, an affordable and, and comfortable uh, access for folks or, or do more CTFs. We host a lot of capture the flag training uh, on our own with my own team. It's like, can we, can we bring that to the table at an even larger scale? Can we have an always on platform like our own war zone, uh, war game? Uh, so that is something that I would be really, really excited about. I, I would love to go full-time YouTube or content or, I don't know, be your own boss, you know? <laughs> and and for you, are, are, are would you make a course? Like, are you, are you, are, are you plans on making like a Udemy course or anything like that? Just, I'm, I'm just wondering. Yeah, no, I'm kicking around the idea. Uh, I have for a very, very long time. And needless to say, a lot of, a lot of folks tend to ask and they say, you know, John, that would be a super sweet thing. Yeah, why don't you do it, man? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably a little bit too much of a perfectionist because when I think, oh, when I think of a course, it's got to be like bundled up with beautiful wrapping paper, a big ribbon on top. It's got to be like the best thing. Uh, and that varies. It's very different from my content because it's, I normally just do like a raw screencast where I show my mistakes. I, I enter the wrong command like 17 times and have to backtrack after wasting 30 minutes. Uh, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm still figuring out what a sort of course quote unquote might look like. Uh, but I would like to do one maybe someday, eventually, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be nice to make a course and just throw it in there and see what happens. And I, I, I know that it's, it's difficult to make a course because yeah. I'm a, I'm a trainer. My, I do tech training and not everyone learns the same. So yep. and you can't please everyone either. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're going to complain about like, Why did you do it this way or that way? You know, just say, say stuff like that uh and someone asked a really good question actually mark asked a good question like what skills what skills did you wish you have learned earlier in your career in tech Ooh. i wish i learned a little bit more this this is interesting if it's all right i think I, I'll, I'll i'll try and go I honestly wish that I had learned, and this is genuine and truthful, I wish I had learned a little bit more help desk and sysadmin like stuff. Uh, what? I, I gotta be, well, it's like, I got to be transparent and honest, right? Like I never, I, I didn't have that. Uh, and I feel like sometimes because it's always been self-taught, because it's always been like, hey, we're just bumping around in the dark trying to figure stuff out. Uh, my first gig, my first job was a 
the cyber instructor. <laughs> and then I went to a cyber red team operator. And then I went to a senior security researcher. It's like, man, I never got to do, I, I never got, I, I don't know where I'm going with this, but I wish I had that like larger purvey of what does a network and environment look like from the bird's eye view, like from a system administrator, here's what it looks like to actually manage printers. Here's what I'm doing to make sure my Active Directory users and groups are really in the good spot across different organizational units, blah, blah, blah. When you poke and pick and prod at that from the hacker's perspective, it's cool, uh, but you're just starting to break it and you don't know how to how you would have been built to begin with. Um, so the support and a lot of that, I, I, I wish I, I had more of that, what you guys are rocking. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of help desk. You could ask someone that if you say help desk three times, you tap your feet three times and say help desk, I show up. It's just, <laughs> that's just how it is with me because I like help desk. Um, uh, Keep It Tech, you said the same thing you said. Like, he said it took him a year to... Keep it like he made a Linux course. I don't know if you know about that, but he Ooh, made a yeah. Linux course. It is so good. Like anyone that that's brand new, I recommend you watch that course if you're brand new to the IT. And and actually in cybersecurity, you got you have to actually pick around Linux too, actually. So oh, yeah. So you need to know Linux. But yeah, keep it like he made a course on it. But it, he says the same thing. He wanted it, he wanted it to be perfect. He's having issues with, with loading it up because he wanted it to be perfect. Just It's like artist, like creative self-loathing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Your own, your, your own worst critic, right? So, yeah. And someone, uh, actually, InfoSec Pack said, how are you doing? How's it going? Good to see you, John. Yeah, good to see you. <laughs> how are things? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, what else? He said, system admin is good to have. It's good to have. Um, and then I asked you another question. What would you say led you to cybersecurity field? Ooh, okay. Um, so I'll, I'll harken back again to, to, I guess those early days, right? I was mentioning, got my feet wet in the, in the Coast Guard at the Coast Guard Academy. Um, and that introduced me to more of that, Hey, security and vulnerabilities and exploit stuff. Um, and truthfully that was, I'm not going to lie capture the flag. Uh, there was a competition called Cyber Stakes. Uh, it was put on by DARPA, which was kind of sweet. Um, and it was an event for all the different service academies. So it was Coast Guard Academy, Air Force Academy, Military Academy, Naval Academy, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it was going to be a live and in-person competition. And I got to play a little bit in the qualifiers enough that they were willing to drag me along uh, and be part of the team. Um, but when we got there, this would have been back in like 2014, 2015, um, a little bit of the underdogs. We, we, we were very new to this. We didn't know what sort of commands to run, what sort of tools to use and the, the process. Uh, but the event was hosted by uh, this group from Carnegie Mellon's university called the Plaid Parliament of Poning. Uh, PPP is sort of their like hacker handle and team name. Uh, and if you look on ctftime.org or if you go to defcon one of like the largest hey hacker security conferences they've consistently won the defcon competition like the world series of hacking uh and it was wild because we didn't know at the time like cool i'm having dinner with like whatever the the best cybersecurity pros or hackers in the scene and so we had no clue but we were asking them, how do we get better at this stuff? How do I improve? And they told us those same, like, here's a big long list of resources. Here's smash the stack. Here's exploit exercises. Here's Vulnhub, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I don't know, that like opened the floodgates. That was like, whoa, there's a whole new world to all these computer stuff I've been kicking around with. And uh, it was just exciting. It was just fun. Cause it's like, again, it felt like Hollywood hacking or defending and protecting. So really fulfilling stuff <laughs> and uh i was gonna ask you a question do you play video games i do uh, a little yeah, what, bit which, which um, games you play? so i have been uh a nintendo switch fella i play a lot of uh super hey. smash brothers whenever i kind of hey. want to unwind yeah yeah <laughs> my main is ganondorf on ultimate <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, and I and I'll goof off with some Rocket League or like, I really like the simple games that are like only five minutes because if I if I were to play like Skyrim or something open world, I get too like way overwhelmed and like I, I it can't fit in my small brain. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, someone was saying actually i actually like to I actually say yeah he's like working help desk you get a lot of sense of patience i agree I, I i've been in that i've been in help desk for a while as well and i'm in a different job now but yeah definitely uh it gives you a a, a newfound respect for people in help desk, especially in in um especially people in cybersecurity when they make changes on the back end and uh, the first people that get hit is help desk <laughs> so that's why we, we all work together, right? Help Desk works together with cybersecurity and cybersecurity works together with Help Desk because they always make changes. And you have things like, well, like Zscaler, Pablo Alto, and then certain things get blocked and then people can't access certain websites, you know, all that good stuff. So, and uh, let's see, <laughs> John, John is a goat and I learned a lot from him. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm a I'm a big I'm a big Steam guy, so I, I actually play. Uh, I was a Counter Strike Source. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. I'm a Counter Strike Source. Yeah, I, I yeah. play Counter Strike Source, and I play uh, Age of Empires. Oh. Those, are, those are my games. That's awesome. I used to play. Um, it was like a golden edition of like Age of Empires One. Uh, Age of Empires Two was really cool, and mm -hmm. I found Stronghold, which is another really cool like hey uh, medieval times. Um, uh, real-time strategy game so super cool <laughs> <laughs> and this is here what is it oh 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 oh, oh i hate i don't like some people don't like this question sticks question uh oh john working <laughs> on blue team do you do a lot with sticks oh here we go <laughs> oh, so this is super cool so right now i am not doing a ton with sticks so so again for folks that might not be familiar sticks are the security technical implementation guides um i think they come from DISA, Defense Information Security Agency. There, there might be some other arms and legs in some places. Um, when I was, again, in that more federal space, they cared like crazy about STIGs. They're like, hey, I want everything to be in compliance with these checklists and these implementation guides for security. Uh, so much so I wanted to create like a, a cheesy Dumbo PowerShell script that would just like apply a STIG, apply a STIG, change the registry, tweak configuration files. Uh, and I have a, I, I might even have a video on that in all reality. Um, but uh, right now we, uh, again, for Huntress, I'm not doing a ton with them yet, but we are going to be trying to move into like a system hardening um, and like actually ensuring good IT hygiene. So uh, I have a strong, strong feeling we'll get into more like, okay, how are we going to board up the windows and lock the doors with security technical implementation guides being a guiding light? <laughs> Got it. Um, do you play with sticks much, Kevin? I'm sorry. I don't no, know. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not in cybersecurity. I, don't, I, I do, cool. uh, I, I do, however, we do, uh, um, like fake emails, uh, with, Ooh. with employees at work. So, like, I'll send you like a free, a free Starbucks coffee when it's not from Starbucks. So, we do like, we do security, uh, awareness training. So, we, we send you, um, fake emails to make sure that, that you're actually following orders and you're actually marking it as spam with uh, with your emails. That's, that's what we do. I do nice. like fake emails and stuff like that. <laughs> so it's good education. It's got to be done. So yeah, it's got to. It's boring, but like people find it boring to spend like two hours sitting down doing cybersecurity. Don't click on this. Don't click on that. Don't put your password in a sticky note underneath your keyboard. You know, like things like that. It's just like. That's that's the other thing. So, oh, so I had a question. So, is getting entry level job in, in cybersecurity IT all the same in the UK and the US? Is a good question. I don't know. That that's a very good question. Yeah, I, I wish I had a better answer. Truthfully, I, I I'm over in the United States uh, and and don't know the UK world. Um, I would have to have a hunch. Hey, it's probably very very similar. Uh, get yourself out there, show your competency, show your strength, uh, and see where the cards land. Yeah, for, for me, because I interview someone in the UK, they they have apprenticeships over there. So if you're IT, if you're trying to get an IT support job, usually what they do is they do apprenticeships and then they hire you full time. That's typically how they do it over there. Some places care about A plus, some don't care about A plus. It depends on the company. So uh, let's see here. John, memories. John, if memory serves correctly, 
you're largely into reverse engineering software. Just curious. What yeah. drew you into the aspect of security? No, thanks so much for asking. Um, I, I, I it's funny. I think I have a little teeter totter on that because I, I can cut through. Hey, some weird living off the land language, like scripting languages. Oh, Visual Basic script, PowerShell, Batch, right? JScript, shenanigans like that. Um, but I, I'm not that good at cutting through a real binary, like in tools, uh, Ghidra and Ida and some of the others, right? Disassemblers and debuggers. I want to get better at that and sharper on that. But the stuff that I've been doing for kind of peeling apart and playing with those other languages it, it came through a un understanding malware and understanding uh, those threat actor techniques. They want to live off the land, right? And use some of the tools and languages that are already present on a Windows computer. So you just kind of have to figure out, oh, how are they obfuscating this or how are they hiding this? Uh, and that is very, very cool because I think it plays well into that CTF sense that captured the flag. Like, I just want to understand. I want to pick up this apart and see what it's doing, where and how. Uh, so totally came from Huntress though and in and, and full transparency. Yeah, William is uh he's on my Discord. He's uh he's nice. he's into Linux. He wants to get into cybersecurity and that's why I figured out what he would ask that question. More power uh, to you, Will. <laughs> <laughs> um see here. Oh, someone said, Yeah, you'd be surprised how many times people at work click on phishing emails. Yeah, it happens. And Kevtech plus Kevtech. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's funny. Uh, so, so John, like what, what are, um, I guess, what are your, what are your plans for, um, uh, the long weekend? Are you off on Monday? Oh, I am. Yes, very much so. Uh, well, Hey, I gotta be up front. Like I, I feel like I am falling behind on some of the other cool, fun, extracurricular stuff. Um, I've been wanting to get out some other videos and some content, um, for the YouTube channel and for just like, Hey, helping some other organizations and companies do what they do. Uh, so hopefully I'll get some time to record. Um, but we are going to be doing some cool social, uh, Hey, friends and family time. I think we have a barbecue coming up tomorrow. So uh, just, uh, finding the balance, you know, finding the balance. <laughs> How about you? So I'm going to do a barbecue as well. And I'm nice. going to a party tomorrow. So it should be fun. Should be, should be a good, good time for me. Heck yeah. Uh, I was going to, I was going to ask you a, a, another, Another question, like what, what, like, I want to know why did you start a YouTube channel? I'm just curious about that. Ooh, yeah. So in, again, harkening back to, Hey, I was just a silly kid Googling and looking around on the internet, how to get good, how to be hacker, how to make video games, how to program and all. Um, honestly, I, I found like, YouTube videos and tutorials. I think way back then it was the new Boston. I don't know if folks might be familiar with that account, uh, but Bucky Roberts or Greg Roberts, right? I think that's his name. Uh, that's how I learned. Uh, and then I thought, you know what? If I want to practice or, or maybe sharpen my skills a little bit more in all this, maybe they say, hey, the best way to know you're a master at something is to try and teach it. So mm -hmm. I made YouTube videos, trying to create tutorials the same way that I learned. And I don't know, giving back hopefully in some strange way. Uh, Cause for one thing, it helps me learn and I hope it helps others learn if just to get new exposure to it. Um, and, and that was really the, the origin was, Hey, that's how I learned. And maybe I can help others learn the same way. Awesome. That's right. Keep it. I had one more question for you. Actually. He said, uh, is there research being done on ways to repurpose malware for defense? Just curious. Yeah. Oh, totally. Super good question. Uh, so this is one of the fun uh, talk tracks or like main stage presentations and stuff that I have fun doing where we say, oh, we're, we're turning the tide on threat actors, right? And you, you hear this term called defend forward, where you start to do a little bit more cyber deception to trick or uh, maybe toggle on or off malicious software. Like folks might be familiar with Cobalt Strike. And if, and if you aren't, Cobalt Strike is a command and control framework uh, originally used for like adversary emulation and pen testing for looking for vulnerabilities and trying to see how you can move through a network uh, to act like the bad guy, the bad person. But bad people tend to use that just as well for actual nefarious illicit stuff. Uh, so 
there was a bug or a vulnerability or a flaw in Cobalt Strike, like within that tooling, that would do like a denial of service attack and would break and stop and choke that software. So it's wild to see, okay, can you use some of that hacking know-how to stop some of the hackers that are doing bad nefarious stuff. Uh, and you see some stuff like that. Hey, you know, the, the memory corruption techniques or just weird error handling and exceptions. Uh, so there's totally, I think, uh, Port Swigger, Port Swigger Labs, the, the folks that put out Burp Suite, they have some cool stuff and a lot of research going into like, how can we find vulnerabilities in malware and displace the damage? Uh, and, I, and I think that's fascinating. WannaCry, right? If folks remember that ransomware, hey, you just register a domain name because we looked at it and that's the thing that stopped the ransomware. It's it's so cool. <laughs> cool. Uh, someone asked another question. Sorry. <laughs> no, man, let's keep them coming. Uh, currently studying network management systems. I have both interests in IT and cybersecurity. How do I maximize learning for both? Hmm. I'm going to totally reread that studying network management systems. How can I maximize learning for both? I, again, maybe uh, forgive me. I'm totally beating the dead horse, but I think a lot, if you get into cybersecurity, some of the it chops, uh, come a little bit organically, right? So using a computer, uh, knowing control panel settings, task manager processes, file system services, blah, blah, blah. Uh, maybe I'm um, trivializing things a little bit too much, but I I think they do come naturally as you poke and play and learn more um, mm -hmm. IP addresses, et cetera. Some of those IT chops, they, they come right along with cybersecurity. And when you know, hey, I'm feeling not too sharp on those, then you can bounce back or go revisit what is the, pure concept in that it space uh do what you like uh do, do the stuff that's fun and you enjoy <laughs> actually in uh someone asked a question about um the imposter syndrome mm. what are your thoughts on that oh i see it uh imposter syndrome kicks in yeah mm -hmm. it takes a special person to feel it uh I'm right there with you, man. Like I, I, I struggle with imposter syndrome all the time, especially when you're working with such incredible and cool people and you're, uh, Hey, you spend some time over on that social media platforms and you see, and everyone celebrate their wins, uh, which is awesome, right? Hey, we're going to totally celebrate along with them and uh, high fives all around, man. That's kudos and, and more power to you. With that said, when you're looking at yourself and your own growth and your own progress, um, it's sometimes really easy to compare yourself to those other people and what they're doing wherever they are in their life uh, at whatever point in the race, right? And it's not a race. Take it whatever pace you want. But don't compare yourself to those other people. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday. So you can say, look, I improved on something because I learned something new or I started to tinker and build in some cool project uh, and – I'm making slow progress, but I'm making progress. That's one foot in front of the other. And eventually I, I, I like to think that imposter syndrome kind of fades away. And if you churn it and mold into a little bit more motivation, like, cool, I want to improve. I want to get better. Even if I feel like, oh, I'm, I'm not the smartest person in the room. Cool. Let's go keep working to become the smartest person in the room. And then we'll go find another room. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it happens to it happens to me too. Like, and I and I always tell people don't don't compare yourself to someone else. Just yeah. do your own thing. Eventually, you'll you'll pick it up. Eventually, it just it takes time. It takes patience and just totally. believe in yourself. Like a lot of it has to do with with uh, your mental mindset. So it's all about your mental mindset and how you look at life. And I try to stay positive. I try to look at a positive way, which is how I am. So, um, give you a. Uh, John, are you, are, are you, do you got to go? Or are you just uh, wondering? I, I, I don't have to, but yeah, whenever you're feeling, Hey, we could wind it down and that would probably might be good. Uh, whatever you're up for my friend, maybe a no, couple I'm more asking minutes. You, I'm not sure if you're busy. That's why if you were asking questions, <laughs> I don't want to, I want to, I want to hold you here for 24 hours with questions. <laughs> nah, man. We, we can do a couple more. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm just checking on you. Make sure you're good. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. Cool. 
uh, let's see here. Uh, are there any hardware requirements to be a security researcher? Where where can the audience learn more about it and what it means to be a security researcher and how what what to do, how to do it? Oh yeah. Oh man. So probably a a curveball, right? Because it, it is obviously a very vague and very broad uh, and generic sort of title, quote unquote. Is it? Uh, there was a really interesting sort of poll going around and something I saw over on Twitter the other day and maybe some on LinkedIn just as well. It's like, would you, would you rather be a specialist knowing, Hey, super thousand depth view on like, I'm really good at one field of security, or would you like much a generalist, very, very wide uh, understanding a little bit here and there of everything. Um, I would go so far to say, I, I think generalist might be a little bit more fun and more versatile and more flexible. And I think that plays really well into doing research and being a security researcher again, quote unquote, because you're like, Hey, I see a problem. I see something where we can improve. I want to go find out the solution and build some prototypes and, and a toy to make it better. Uh, and that comes along right with it. So I wish I could give you a better answer. Hey, what do I do to specifically be a security researcher? But it's, uh, hey, do a little bit of everything. Be a jack of all trades uh, and absorb as much as you can. Got it. Yeah, so so Stephen is actually from, uh, uh, Stephen is actually from TCM. So I'm nice. uh, with, uh, from Heath, Heath Adams. Heck so yeah. he actually works together with TCM. And uh, yeah, he's, he's here, so. <laughs> Sweet, thanks so much, Stephen. <laughs> um, do you know anything about SOC analysts? Like yeah. what skills you need for SOC analysts? Yeah. Um, so uh, over at, at Huntress, right, we uh, have the security researchers as well as the threat analysts that are that parallel pretty well to a, a security operations center analyst, like folks man in the watch floor, folks with their eyes on the dashboard, and then going in to do investigations when the time comes. Um, for some skills, I think, hey, it's really great to know virtualization. If you can cut together some VMs or uh, VirtualBox, VMware Workstation, whatever the case may be. So you can test stuff and play stuff. Um, and then knowing the file system and what goes where and what's normal and what's natural and what's not. Like you have the context of what's good, bad, and ugly. Like mm, probably shouldn't see some of those executables running out of the temporary directory or app data for a specific user. Or like, hey, I see some weird processes. Somehow command prompt has spawned out of Microsoft Word. Totally not good, right? Right. Uh, just that context of processes, what's a baseline look like for a computer uh, and network activity just as well. So I'm, I'm bebopping around a little bit all over the place and I'm <laughs> sorry for that. Uh, but I think it's, hey, what does a normal computer look like? What is a good functioning state? And then when you can analyze and see something weird, you know that it's weird. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, makes sense. Um, someone has like someone has, actually two people had the same question, similar questions. Um, as a beginner, what would be the best way to start in cybersecurity? And 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 the thing is, like this question is hard to answer because I there's like so many cybersecurity jobs. Like, what do you want to do? Right. Yeah. It's another thing. So I guess what's your advice on this for someone? Oh, I, I appreciate your assist on that one, man, because the, the an honest answer is whatever you find interesting. <laughs> and I'm sorry <laughs> to keep going back to that, but it's like, I can't make that decision. That's totally your call. Um, I, I think if you find something that you enjoy, whether it's, hey, reverse engineering some of the malware or responding to threats and incidents or programming or software development or, hey, I want to be that pen tester. I want to be a bug bounty hunter looking for vulnerabilities. Uh, get yourself in those circles and network with the folks that tend to do that a little bit. And then you'll find yourself at the gig, at the role, at the job that you're looking at soon enough. Um, and I don't think there's any sort of staggering, Hey, do I need a junior position or do I need an intermediate or a senior position? Right. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that. <laughs> if you look at a job rec and they, Hey, there's some formal applications here and there. When you see requirements, uh, I would go so far as to say, don't think of those as requirements and like, oh, I, I don't qualify for that job. I'm, I'm not even going to try for it. 
their suggestions, their guidelines. These are the, these are the nice to have things. If you feel like, Hey, I meet some of these here and there, and I can work my butt off to keep cruising towards the other things. Uh, I can bring something to the table that's still super duper valuable. Um, and that finding the company that understands and will embrace that. I think that's what you're hoping for, for a first job in cybersecurity. <laughs> I, I, I agree with that. And that's the same thing with, with uh, when I train when I train my students in help desk, I tell them that if you see a job requirements, apply anyway. You never know unless you try, right? So just go for it and see what happens. So the worst, it, the worst that could happen, you get rejected, right? And then you just you brush it off and you go to the next job. And that's it. So that's I would actually I mean, Oh yeah. If it's I okay, know. I tend to yeah. tell folks like there's no shame in applying to wherever you can. Uh, because you can kind of get a feel for your market value. And this may be, maybe this sounds, uh, maybe this is a polarizing opinion. Um, but when you're looking for your gig, when you're looking for a job, something to, to help pay the bills, right? You're, uh, you're selling yourself like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to sell a t-shirt. And if I can get someone to buy this thing for $10, sweet. But if I can get someone to buy this for a hundred dollars, I'm going to go with the folks that can help more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like uh, get an idea, get a good gauge for where you can bring the most value and they can bring value to you, you know? Yeah, I'm, I, I agree with you. I'm the same way. So I say, believe in yourself. And uh, one thing I, I, I train my, my interns is to embrace rejection. So like when you're brand new, embrace rejection. Because when you're brand new, you're going to get rejected a couple of times, but someone will open the door for you. But you got to believe in yourself. It's all about mental mindset and believing in yourself. Totally. Um, that's just how I feel as my personal opinion. So I was actually going to ask you one last question, actually, John. So this is a, this is a, a, a controversial question. Ooh, um, okay. So should you, should you work help? Do you, should you work help desk if you want to get into cybersecurity or can you not work help desk and get into cybersecurity? Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> Super good question. Thank you for asking and, and opening the can of worms because I know there has been a hot debate on, on this, right? Uh, so please bear in mind with the grain of salt, everything that I've kind of already said and that uh, here's my answer. No, you don't have to have a job and or go through some career trajectory and help desk, IT professional, sysadmin, network admin suddenly pivot over to security. You don't have to. If you find yourself uh, in the cool spot, like, hey, let's just dive into the stuff that I'm feeling and you just jump into cybersecurity, that's awesome. With that said, I, I, I try to just wanted to come clean when I had said like, look, I really wish I had some of those help desk chops. Like, I, I wish I had some of that sysadmin purview because I, I don't and I feel like I'm missing it. Uh, so you don't have to is the answer, but it's very, very cool to get experience in as many things as you can. Um, and I think maybe that's the best way I could, I could round out that question. What do you think? Can, can I, can I pivot that right back to you, Kevin? Like I personally, I feel like, I, I feel like, uh, no, you, you could, you could definitely get into a cyber because, I, I, I worked with a lot of students and a lot of people and I seen people get jobs in, in security without having a help desk background. Is it is it worth it or is it good to know like help desk stuff? Yeah, I, I think it's it's good to know. Do you need it? You probably do need it, but should you work in help desk? It's at the end of the day, I tell people it's not for everyone because uh for help desk you need to have people skills, you need to have uh sometimes you need to have uh, thick skin, especially when working with tough customers. And you need to have empathy. So it's very it's very difficult sometimes working helped us. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. It depends on the company. So for me, I feel like it's good to have, but you don't have to do it. So well, I remember you mentioned, I think to me when we were just chatting back and forth, like, hey, your background was kind of from a restaurant. Is that fair to say? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's different walks of life can come together, but you're totally on the money and that like it comes down to a person to person level. Hey, if you can communicate and you have empathy and you're understanding, they're going to be screaming their head off. Something's not working. I can't get my computer to blah, blah, blah. Right. Uh, you'll see varying levels of that. I like to think just as well in cybersecurity because we're banging our head against the wall, trying to do things that we don't know what we're doing yet. 
No, def definitely. It's just that that's the thing with me is that I, I, I tell people that if you want to work help desk, you come and look for me. I'll train you on that. But if you if you don't want to, because a lot of people don't want to, I get that. And I, John, I'm not not to say anything bad, but I always get asked this question: How do I skip help desk? I want to just get into security. You know, like some sometimes I get um, I get people that don't like help desk for some reason, so they they try to skip it as much as possible. So that's why I figure I ask you that question. For some reason, people don't don't like help desk. So, just saying. <laughs> no, it, it, it's a different realm. Uh, I think they do still bleed and blend into each other just a bit. Um, but as you mentioned, look, you you can. Uh, but it, it's such a valuable and, and helpful skill. So, mm -hmm. definitely. And uh, someone actually had a question: How to improve your analytical skills? Ooh, yeah. cool. And Good I question. think that would be an all right one to to probably wrap this up with, if that's yep. all right. Because I think. Mm -hmm. Honestly, and maybe this is how we can tie this thing together is it's practice. I wish I could give you a better answer. I wish there were like a, hey, here's how to skip section. Here's how to whatever, get rich quick scheme or whatever. No, nah, it's it's that practice. It's that exploration. It's that hard work and grit a little bit, but pivot and change that mentality to like, it's fun. Uh, it, it's, it's playing. It's tinkering and it's experimenting. Um, and while that might take time, you turn out so much better at the other end of it. So thanks definitely. so much for letting me come hang out with everyone. I, I hope that's maybe a good note to end on. <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, with that being said, everyone, I hope everyone has a good day, a good evening. Have a good long weekend if you guys are off on Monday. And uh, thank you, John, for being here. And I'm going to end the stream right now. Let me end this it. This was a hope treat. Thank you, John. <laughs> me end the stream. Thanks, all.